Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Good morning. Welcome to Daily Fountain, the daily devotional of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Please call all members of your family and everybody around. Let us sit together at the feet of Jesus, for the, he will bless us this morning. Let us pray. Almighty Father, we thank you for the miracle of keeping us in the night and waking us up to a lively hope. Thank you for the blessings of the yesterdays and yesteryears and for what you are proposed to do today and tomorrow. Lord, it is joyful for us to come to you this morning. We ask you, Lord, that you will reveal your mind to us through your word and you make our day glorious indeed. Bless us through your word. Grant unto us understanding and grant unto us grace. That what you will tell us, what you will teach us, we may do to the glory of your name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today is Friday, November the 20th, the year 2020. This morning, our topic is dwelling in Goshen. Dwelling in Goshen. And the text is taken from Genesis chapter 47. We read from verses 13 to 31. Genesis chapter 47. We read from verse 13 to 31. I read. And there was no bread in all the land, for the famine was very sore. So that the land of Egypt and all the land of Canaan fainted by reason of the famine. And Joseph gathered all the money that was found in the land of Egypt and in the land of Canaan, for the corn which they bought. And Joseph brought the money into Pharaoh's house. And when money failed in the land of Egypt and in the land of Canaan, all the Egyptians came unto Joseph and said, Give us bread, for why should we die in thy presence? For the money falleth. And Joseph said, Give your cattle, and I will give you for your cattle if money fail. And they brought their cattle unto Joseph. And Joseph gave them bread in exchange for horses, and for the flocks, and for the cattle of the herds, and for the asses, and he fed them with bread for all their cattle for that year. When that year was ended, they came unto him the second year, and said unto him, We will not hide it from my Lord, how that our money is spent. My Lord also had our herds of cattle. There is not aught left in the sight of my Lord, but our bodies and our lands. Wherefore shall we die before thine eyes, both we and our land? Buy us and our land for bread, and we and our land will be servants unto Pharaoh, and give us seed that we may live and not die, that the land be not desolate. And Joseph bought all the land of Egypt for Pharaoh. For the Egyptians sold every man his field, because the famine prevailed over them. So the land became Pharaoh's. And as for the people, he removed them to cities. From one end of the borders of Egypt, even to the other end thereof. Only the land of the priests bought he not, for the priests had a portion assigned them of Pharaoh, and did eat their portion with Pharaoh, which Pharaoh gave them. Wherefore they sold not their lands. Then Joseph said unto the people, Behold, I have bought you this day, and your land for Pharaoh. Lo, here is seed for you, and ye shall sow the land. And it shall come to pass. In the increase, that ye shall give the fifth part unto Pharaoh, and four parts shall be your own, for seed of the field, and for your food, and for them of your households, and for food for your little ones. And they said, Thou hast saved our lives, let us find grace in thy sight, in the sight of my Lord, and we will be Pharaoh's servants. And Joseph made it a law over the land of Egypt unto this day, that Pharaoh should have the fifth part, except the land of the priests only, which became not Pharaoh's. And Israel dwelt in the land of Egypt, in the country of Goshen. And they had possessions therein, and grew, and multiplied exceedingly. And Jacob lived in the land of Egypt seventeen years. So the old age of Jacob was an hundred forty and seven years. And the time drew nigh that Israel must die. And he called his son Joseph, and said unto him, 
If now I found grace in thy sight, put, I pray thee, thy hand under my tie, and deal kindly and truly with me. Bury me not, I pray thee, in Egypt, but I will land with my fathers. And thou shalt carry me out of Egypt, and bury me in the burying place. And he said, I will do as thou hast said. And he said, Swear unto me. And he swear unto him. And Israel bowed himself upon the bed's head. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Dwelling in Goshen, our topic of discussion this morning, we see from the passage that the place of the dwelling of the children of Israel in the land of Egypt was the only place covered at that time by grace. The kind of grace that gave them everything they wanted. The kind of grace that made them comfortable. It was like rain was falling there while rain was not falling in other, in other places. Why? Because the eyes of the Lord was there. Why? Because the presence of God was there. God deliberately did that as a mark of his own name to show that wherever his name is, there will be abundance, there will be provision, there will be a lot of blessings. And no one needs to fear or worry over anything. And the Lord protected the place against all forms of attacks and made the place a sure dwelling place. A place that they loved, they enjoyed a lot of things. We saw in this uh, passage that we have read this morning, especially from verse 27, that passage singled out the land of Goshen. I repeat the passage, verse 27 again. And Israel dwelt in the land of Egypt, in the country of Goshen, and they had possessions therein, and they grew, and they multiplied. Not just multiplied, they multiplied exceedingly. And when you now see the Egyptians running to Joseph, asking for this, even asking that their bodies be given, just for them to find food to eat, they gave their lands. They willingly, they didn't feel that they were cheated. They didn't feel that, well, the, the, the decree of the king of Egypt was, was harsh. It was with willingness they gave these things. And God gave Joseph wisdom of administration to rule the people, the advantage of the people and to the advantage of Pharaoh. And I, I, suspect that Pharaoh, I suspect that Pharaoh might not have even expected such time of blessing for him. But that's the way it is when a man of God is in charge of administration. When the people of God are on the throne, there's joy in the land. There's abundance in the land. But you see, look at the land of Goshen in contradistinction with the general land of Egypt. Even though Goshen was part of the land of Egypt, but it was like a carved place out. And that's the way it is. The place where God is, is represented by Goshen in this place today. And the Bible says in Psalm 91 verse 1, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. The secret place of the Most High, the shadow of the Almighty. That's the Goshen. So Goshen we are talking about this morning, it's not like a geographical location. It's not like everybody should move from this family this morning and then let us travel to a place called, called Goshen, a geographical location. No. We can create it here, right in this sitting room right in the bedroom, right in our offices, right in our hearts. How? Be it is the place of the dwelling of God. How do we create it? By meditation in the word of God, by prayer, by studying the word, by regular fellowship with the Lord, by living the holy life. God is holy. The Bible says his eyes are too holy to behold sin. Once we make up our minds to live the life of God, he will be with us. Once we make up our mind to defend the standard, to stand by the word of God, God will make our home also Goshen. It is not difficult for him to do. That's the essence of this study this morning. That you and I may now make up our mind that my home from today shall be Goshen. My office from today shall be Goshen. My life from today shall be Goshen, shall be the place of the dwelling of God. It is the secret place of the most high God. And it is the place where God can, can dwell. You know, there will be no cheating there. You know, there will be no immorality there. You know, there will be no fighting there. There will be no keeping of malice. There will be no uh, attempt to, to do in another person or to stop the progress of the other person. People of God, the reason for God showing us this is to also make us to know that we can actually create our own Goshen. How do we 
like we said, regular fellowship with God, communion with God. There's no way one can commune commun, uh, commun with God without praying, without studying the word of God. That's why every morning, it is established in the very good Christian home. Everybody should know. We come together to the altar to study the word of God, to ask of the Lord and let him speak with us. And then when he gives us instruction, we go on with the instruction for the day. And then we present our petition to him, we present our request to him in our prayers. And because his word provides solution to every need of life. And so, God was showing this as an example, that if I can do that in a land that is strange, I can do it in your family. I can do it in your, in your life. I can do it in your office. Your office can become the Goshen. That every other office is around, every other establishment around will begin to come and seek for solution and ask you, how are you doing it? And you show them it is the way of the Lord. It is because I live by the mind of God. And so people of God this morning, we are challenged because wherever we call Goshen is the place of the presence of God. In fact, the Bible says in 2 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 9, the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward him. So anywhere the people of God are, anywhere they are, and the, the life they live is after God, the Lord will show the place as his own place of preference, as his place of blessing. That is Goshen. So his eyes goes all over the earth to prove himself mighty. And Isaiah chapter 66, verse 2, he said, For all those things are my hand made, and all those things have been, said the Lord. But to this man will I look, even to him that is poor, and of a contrite spirit, and trembleth at my word. A contrite spirit. A spirit that is ready to follow the way of God. A heart that is, that is tender, that cannot harbor evil, that is always thinking of God, always thinking of what the will of the Lord is, what will make God happy. What good can I do to my neighbor? What is the word of God saying about this, saying about that, and saying about this? And people of God, we need to start this kind of life. That's why the greatest call is that we come to Jesus. If you are not born again yet, why not this morning? Give your life to Jesus. Just confess your sin. It doesn't cost you anything. Confess your sin. Tell Jesus you are sorry. Renounce your sin and tell him you will not go back those ways. And indeed, he will preserve you. And make up your mind that from this day, his word will guide your life. His mind will guide your work. And that you will always do those things that you see in scriptures. That you will pattern your life after the life of Jesus. And then you just see that you are a carrier of Jesus all over the place. You are a carrier of God anywhere you are. So anywhere you are, is Goshen. Sickness cannot come there. Afflictions cannot come there. You will not be there and be grumbling, lack and be saying we are owing this and owing that and sicknesses are afflicting. No, that will not be your portion. Why? Because you have cultivated Goshen. You have deliberately made up your mind to make the Lord your strong place. And when you do this, God will bless you. And the Lord is inviting everybody this morning to his Goshen. And that's why the Bible says in Matthew's Gospel chapter 11, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And when you come to him, you are not coming by qualification. You are coming because he has made a call. Come to him as you are. But he will not allow you to go the way you have come. He will take your life. He will cleanse your life by his blood. He will purge you of all the tendencies of evil. And he will put himself into your life. And as you grow, as you grow in him, he increases his life in you. And so your gushing is made. And you also dwell in gushing. And you invite other people into the gushing. And as they come, they are blessed. They are transformed. And gradually you and I can transform the whole of our country, all of our area into Goshen. That is what the Lord is asking us to do this morning. That we may find joy in him and that others may really see the reason for our worship. Come to him this morning and make your house, your office, your life Goshen. Let us pray. Our Father, we thank you for this word you have given us this morning. We pray that according to what you have done in the land of Goshen, you will do in our lives, in our families, in our offices, and all that concerns every one of us in Jesus' name. Please grant unto us from this day that we will carry this consciousness that indeed we can create a Goshen 
And indeed from today we shall create the Goshen. And you will dwell in us and with us and our families. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name. At the end of the day, we shall give glory to your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of The Daily Fountain. To alert the sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen.